Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptilia Addis. In today's video, we are going to be doing a long-awaited isopod collection tour. Now, for those of you that know, I've recently moved back to Ontario from BC and moving an isopod collection is a really daunting task. Not only are you having to like collect as many of each kind from the cultures and pack them, there's always something left over. And I did give a bunch of those to my friends, but the whole process was exhausting because I have so many different kinds. So you're going to see in this video that this is essentially all I have left for my isopods. Uh, I still have quite a few species and morphs, etc. But what you see in the video is every kind I have. There's nothing else. I might get a few others eventually, but that's the whole collection. So, I'm also kind of curious who here keeps isopods. Like a lot of you guys have commented saying, oh this is so interesting, never thought I'd watch like an hour long isopod video, <laughs> things like that. But if you actually keep isopods yourself, go ahead and drop an isopod in the comments section down below. Or even better, write isopod keeper here, you know like isopod keeper and list off some of the species you keep. I'm always really curious to know who's keeping isopods and how many species. I'll go ahead and give each of your comments a heart after I've read and checked out what you have. So fun little way we can communicate. Cool. Anyways, I'm gonna stop blabbing because yeah this is gonna be a long video so we'll get right into it. And as always if you enjoy this type of content, you like seeing these types of pets, please don't forget to subscribe down below and ding the notification bell to know when my next video is coming out. Really appreciate it, it means a lot and if you like the isopods don't forget to give them a thumbs up. Helps me, helps the channel grow and yeah, couldn't tell you how much I appreciate it immensely. Super, super immensely. All right, guys, so here we go. Um, I'm just gonna be real honest with you. I am not organizing these animals in alphabetical order by genera. It's just gonna be like, genera that start with the letter A, and that's about it. We're not gonna be organizing the species in alphabetical order as well, so. Please just know there'll be some A's and then C's and then so on and so forth. It's pretty much just A, C's and P's, honestly. But yeah, I did do that favor and bear with me the rest of the way. The first species we're going to be taking a look at here is the Armadillo officinalis Greece. So this is the Greek locality of the Armadillo officinalis species. Now this is a fascinating type of isopod and the reason for that point is that they are known to stradulate or stridulate, which is where animals generally possess some form of bristle or hair-like structures that they rub together to produce a sound, usually warning a predator or potential threat, shocking them even, so as to evade predation. So if you can imagine a tarantula might stradulate to sort of seem more threatening to a predator, these animals are also capable of making a little buzzing clicking sound to evade potentially becoming something's meal. So I'm gonna take one of the larger animals and hopefully we'll be able to pick up on that sound uh, using the microphone on this camera. Let's see what happens. This animal doesn't seem too keen on we go listen. I'm not sure if you caught that earlier. The funny enough, this is one of my favorite species I keep. A lot of people say, well, they just look like an Armadillidium vulgare, but honestly, they're just not. They look like a cross between a Cubaris and an, an Armadillidium species, and they're just absolutely adorable. They're actually quite large uh, for an isopod. Um, significantly larger than most Armadillidium species. Here you go, friend. And yeah, they're just very hardy, easy to keep animals. Just very beautiful. Sometimes color is in everything, you know. So this colony is doing very well. Mind you, all the animals have just kind of been reintroduced into enclosures and they're slowly thriving again. Uh, I mean, they were never not doing well, but they've, they've gotten going. So there's a few larger adult animals with some larger juveniles. 
You may see a little bit of mold there from some uneaten food that was left over before. And here you can see, again, there's a light animal. I need to get in here and pick out some of those individuals. I'm not sure what the dealio is with that, but very interesting. I need to isolate that if I can. So cool to see. Need to find a few more like that one. So you see that half and half one? In case you're wondering what that is. When isopods molt, oftentimes they molt uh, one half of their body at a time. So it'd be like the head to the middle and then middle to the tail end of the animal. Let's move on. Okay friends, we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on these ones just because they're so similar. These are the Armadillo officinalis Spain. So it's the same species, but the Spanish locality. And between countries or geographic regions, this species does have different phenotypic expression. Uh, they do look different. Some of them are a bit larger, some of them a bit lighter. Um, there's one kind I'd really like to be able to start culturing. That's the Armadillo officinalis Israel because I'd really like to get the Israeli species, or rather, I should say, the Israeli form in my care. It'd be really cool to culture them. But this is the uh, Spanish version of the Armadillo officinalis. Very cool. Okay guys, so these are the Armadillo paracae or paracae, I'm not sure on the exact pronunciation. They're very underrated isopod species. They look really cool. Uh, my colony kind of did go through some rough times in the move, so unfortunately I, the numbers are dwindling. But I do have a few manka, some juvenile like you see here, and a few adults. So I think with some tender love and care they will bounce back just fine. So I did want to include them in the video. Wanted to be honest that there aren't too many of them right now. So, Okay friends, so this is uh, one of everybody's hobby favorites, the Armadillidium maculatum as we venture into the Armadillidium genus. Here you can see quite a few animals. Some of them have different phenotypic expressions. So you'll notice that there are a few that are sort of more of a brownish color than uh, black. If you can kind of make that out there. And so I'd really like to isolate those as like sort of something along the lines of a chocolate almost. See what I can do. Um, I'm really eager to start playing around with genetic expression in these animals. Especially this species since it throws so many different variations. So as you can see we have the proper striped animals. But then we also have some that have broken bands. Irregularly structured. You could go so far as look for animals that hardly have any stripes. And try to select breed those. You know put them into culture and pick out anyone that still looks like the normal uh, appearing zebra. There's a lot of opportunity. Now you're going to notice in this culture I have uh, a lone dairy cow who's actually quite large. The story behind this animal is it somehow ended up here as a manka. This would have been July 2018. So I was going to remove the animal and place it back into the dairy cow culture when I thought to myself why not this animal is so different than all the rest why not let it live here it's not gonna outcompete anyone and it can sort of be an experiment and see how long one isopod can live of course there are a tremendous amount of variables that can affect the animal's longevity but this here's the thing guys this animal has been in this enclosure alive and thriving for well over a year so it just goes to show that isopods individually can certainly live well over a year and you know come July if this animal is hopefully still alive it'll be two years old and the cool thing about little uh, dairy cow here is that it's significantly larger than all its other uh, P. Levis dairy cow counterparts it is it like just tanks them. So that is definitely a combination of access to food and not having to compete with isopods of equal size or maybe just not having to compete with its own species for resources. But it's fascinating to see that when the animal has been placed in a culture with a totally different species, it's allowed it to get a lot larger in size. So anyways, there you go. Armadillidium maculatum. The zebra isopods and the little dairy cow there. Well, not so little dairy cow cruising around. And if you want to come up with a name for this awesome animal, go ahead and drop them in the comment section down below. Okay guys, so the next species is the 
Armadillidium Maculatum France line. These are also zebras. They're supposedly known to get a lot larger, and I can already say that that is the case. They are significantly, well, I mean, not significantly, but they are a little bit larger than regular Maculatums. And the thing I like about them is there seems to be a lot more variation between the animals. So you can see that some of them are really just spotted and not banded. And so, again, great opportunity to isolate different traits and see if we can create a culture that's unique from the naturally occurring form of the animal or I guess most commonly occurring form since it's not unnatural for them to uh, have this form of pattern. Uh, you can see a good example here. These guys are practically spotted as opposed to banded and then you have an animal that's banded there with a bit of broken banding and then there are a few of those like chocolatey colored ones in here as well so very cool okay so the next isopods we're taking a look at here are the armadillidium warneri which are the uh, lovely form of isopod there i think part of the clown isopod family so very similar to the klugi montenegro except for Dorsally, all the dots on their body are white. There is no center yellow row, if you will. Now, these animals have been a, a real challenge for me to keep. You can see one eating some food there. I, I started off with a few, and they kind of just slowly dwindled in numbers gradually. I mean, there were a few DOAs to begin with, but I don't know if I was just left with one sex by the end of it, because they did not breed. I had like three left by the end of that year, or by the end of 2018. They just, you know, lived a bit and died. I've been very fortunate to acquire a new culture that seems to be doing really well. They're from my friend Trevor out in Victoria. We did a trade and he was very kind to provide me with these animals. But yeah, these ones seem to be doing well. It would just make my day if they would breed for me. That would be really nice. Um... But, uh, yes, actually, speak of the devil, those guys might have just been in the process of breeding. We shall see what happens, but, I mean, they seem to be thriving. That's the most important thing. Beautiful, beautiful isopods here. Have another look. Um, yeah, they're just gorgeous. Really some lovely colors you can appreciate here on the animals, as you can see. Fantastic. Okay, friends, so these are my Armadillidium uh, species albino T negative. So this is T negative albinos. Right away, you're going to see there's a uh, Porcilio expansus. This is actually Porcilio expansus orange. You can see it's kind of young, but it's starting to develop some orange near the base of its body. Very sad story. I had a culture of these that I purchased, and I was hoping to make a video about them, but they just started doing terribly. I had a few DOAs to begin with, and then a few animals cannibalized each other, and moving to Ontario, I had a few losses. So this is regrettably the last animal I have, and I decided to just keep it with these guys here. Uh, I find that some isopods seem to do well cohabiting with others. I know it's not going to harm any of the armadillidiums in here, so no harm, no foul. It can live the rest of its days out in here. Mind you, I am planning to acquire this species again from a friend. We're probably going to be doing a trade for some Porcilio Warneri that I have that you'll see soon. Um, so I will get more of the Expansus Orange. This girl is just going to live in here for now. That's why she's in there. There's my spiel. But moving on, you can see here are the gorgeous little... Uh, T negative albinos. You can see there that they practically look like patternless um, armadillidium magic potions. They are beautiful little isopods. Uh, there's a few there. There should be one right here as well. They just look so nice. The color on these animals, well, the lack of color on these animals is quite something. Let's go in for the close up. Look at that. And you can just see its eyes there in the front of their face, which is... You can't pretend that it's not adorable. Look at those little two eyes. So cute. See them? The little reddish dot. Yeah, they're really, really special. So, we'll go ahead and 
put that little adorable animal down. Awesome. Armadillidium T negative albino. Okay, next up we have one of the largest species of armadillidium in the hobby. These are the armadillidium gastroi or gestroi. These isopods are tanks. Uh, if you look here, these are some of my mature animals hanging out on this piece of wood. They're quite large for an isopod of this uh, genus. So here you can see a bunch of my uh, juveniles with some adults. They are really, really impressive, beautifully colored animals, really cool. I think that one there specifically is like the tank of my collection. I'll try to gently coax them out onto my hand so you can really have a look. They're kind of getting up there in age too, unfortunately they're missing part of their antennae. So yeah, you can kind of see what a beautiful isopod this is. Awesome, look at those guys. Beautiful. So my animals are still quite young here, but these would be arguably the next largest isopod species, that is the Armadillidium genus. These are the Armadillidium granulatums, and they're also known to be quite large as adults, and also very beautiful colors. So you can see it's kind of this base gray, almost purpley gray with also uh, nice, uh, light yellow coloration so definitely a colorful animal to appreciate and you can see where they get their name the granulated um, exoskeleton very very cool isopods as well so I don't have too many of these but I wanted to give them a spacious enclosure now these are my armadillidium punticanas which are kind of a really neat type of isopod they sort of um, are popular because they look like a party mix type if you will you get a lot of phenotypic diversity in this species some will be orange some will be like brown some of them might even be a yellow color uh, you can see actually here there's a few hiding so that's one of them and then there's another one there so yeah they're really unusually colored uh, it's just very cool. So hopefully there's enough diversity within my tiny little group that I have that they'll sort of, you know, get going and uh, produce some different mankind. This this culture will really take off. But yeah, those are the Armadillidium punticanas, a very, very cool type of Armadillidium species. Here we have a highly prolific and must-have species. This is the Armadillidium albino species Japan, a very, very cool type of isopod. Now, the juveniles in Mankai, the species, tend to be very yellowy gold in coloration, but I find that as they age, they sort of go a more rose gold color. I'm not even sure if I have that many adults left in the culture. I mean, looking at the juveniles here, you can see and there's just a bunch of springtails. It's just, if you're wondering what those little guys are, the springtails help bring them all down. Um, looking at these, you can see they're very light in coloration, but the adult animals are really, like, they, they, they gradually darken. So, I don't, again, think I have too many adults. Yeah, they, they look a lot older. Oh, you can see that one there is... That one there has been molting. We won't disturb it too much. So as I mentioned, they molt in halves and they'll usually consume the exoskeleton to get that calcium back. So, But yeah, those are them. They're really, really nice. Very active, good eaters, quite hardy. Really, really cute, beautiful little isopods. Now the next type of armadillidium I want to show you guys is the armadillidium magic potion. And they are... Easily one of my favorite forms. Very, very cool. So you can see there are a few juveniles here. Very cute little isopods. Now these guys are known for their, basically almost like the T negative albino for color. They have, they're pretty well just like a clearish milky white color with uh, black speckling and, and goldy, uh, goldish greeny yellow speckling as well. Here we go. Uh, we have a larger adult animal that was under the piece of cuttlefish bone. I'm going to gently pick them up and see if we can get them to 
come out and say hi. So right away you can see the coloration that I was uh, saying they are. They're very, very nice isopod. Hi there. Don't be shy. You're okay. Come on. Don't be shy. Look at that isopod. Very good. Come on out. Yeah. There you go. Well, now they'll be in a comfortable place. Just gonna cling to the wood, turn, and there you go. Ooh, here are a few more. See? Very, very nice. So those are the magic potions. Here we have another gorgeous species of isopod. These are the Armadillidium sordidum tangerines. So it's very obvious why they are called tangerine isopods. Oh, don't fall. You okay, bud? There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so they are doing very, very well, as you can see. Lots and lots of isopods here. Um, yeah, they're, they're just doing fantastic. I notice here that one animal seems to have sort of like a white skirt. I don't know if you can kind of see that there, whereas the other ones are all really that tangerine color. The one animal has a skirt. So, again, and it might be another trait to isolate. It might not be. It might not be anything. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're really gorgeous isopods, if you take a good look at them there. So... Happy to see them doing so well. Oh, sorry. Watch yourself. Awesome. Armadillidium, Sordidum, Tangerine. Here we have another hobby favorite and arguably one of the most colorful species of isopod in the trade. This is the Armadillidium Klugi Montenegro. So these isopods are known for having four colors on them. Right away you'll notice that the animals are a combination of red skirts black base coloration, two rows of white spots with a center row of yellow. So they are a very, very nice isopod. Very cool. Um, probably a lot more of them here. There you go, you can see them. It's not picking up on the yellow so well, but yeah, there you go, you can kind of make it out there. Yeah, they are just really, really nice. Gorgeous. Alright guys, so the last species of Armadillidium we're going to be showing are the Armadillidium species Nasadum Peach. So this is the peach form of the grey colored naturally occurring Nasadum. And here you can also see that I have isolated one of those brown zebras just to kind of, again, see you what will happen why not and it's been with these guys for quite some time so here are the peach nasatum very nice little isopods so the next isopods are quite curious this is the uh, bc local lads uh, these are just a bunch of different isopods that were collected in british columbia under rocks and i just thought i'd try and culture them here uh, so you can see a bunch of them there some interesting phenotypes popping up within these animals too but um yeah they seem to be doing quite well they're enjoying that I added some more cork and gave them more hiding options, less competition, more surface area for them to live on. I'm fairly certain these are the Onesis acillus, probably, or maybe they're also Sporcilla scaber, but these all look like Onesis acillus to me. Very, very nice. So these here are a pretty interesting type of isopod as well. They're the Onesis acillus albino. So I'll try and find a few animals here. Okay, so apparently I'm blind. They're hiding on some of the egg cartons. So these are albino and this is acillus. Hopefully they're going to breed as well. There's a few of them in the enclosure. Uh, yeah, they're pretty cool. Got those from Trevor as well. Okay friends, so now we are going to move on to the Cubaris genus. This is an interesting species. I have a lot of people asking me about it. And there seems to be some confusion since they do look very similar to the Cubaris marina, but they are not the same species. You will notice a bit of difference. 
These are the Cubera species Borneo. They do originate from Borneo. And you can kind of see the differences here if you look at them closely. Unfortunately, I no longer keep Cubera species Marina. I would like to get some again soon, but yes, these are the Borneo species of Cubaris. So I have plenty of them if you're interested in them and you are located in Canada, feel free to message me. But yeah, they're really neat little isopods. And uh, they seem to be very hardy as far as Cubaris go. Okay guys, so this is my culture of Cubaris Pakchongs. They are a beautiful species of isopod, actually from Thailand, uh, surrounded by the invasive Nagaris cristatus, which is like a gray, dwarf gray. They've been corrected. I swear someone told me they were from uh, Vietnam, but they are not. Turns out they are from Thailand. So my mistake, everybody. Again, we have a few more of the Nigris Cristatus here, as well as a larger Pak Chong. A lot of their Mankai are hiding in the moss right now, so probably going to end up rehousing them. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh, that's the same one. Hi, little buddy. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, I really, really enjoy the Pak Chongs. They're, they're quite adorable. They look like little penguins or something with the gray and white and then a little beak. Now it's quite possible that many of you haven't seen the video yet, so I'll certainly leave a link up above here for you to catch up. I no longer keep Cubaris species rubber ducky. It was a very heartbreaking, tough decision to make, but I'm very glad I made the decision. So if you want to know the whole story behind that, just watch that video. Anyways, this is the last species of Cubaris that you'll be seeing today. Uh, these are the Cubaris species orange tigers and they appear to be doing quite well. Here's a few of them. They're really, really nice. And they also have quite a bit of phenotypic expression to offer. Some of them are a lot darker, some of them are a lot lighter. Um, really, really pretty animals. Quite rare in the hobby, for sure. Here's one that's halfway through a molt. But uh, it's, my, it's my great hope that they're going to thrive as everyone else is and breed I need more tigers I would love to have more of these look at those beautiful isopods okay so I need to go through this culture I'm not gonna lie I have no idea how the heck they got in here I have some Arbonidilidium species albino in here and I think even some Armadillidium maculatum that somehow got in here. But there's few enough of them that I think it still makes more sense to take them out as opposed to isolate the original species. It's not one of those powder blues got into my culture situations that some of you other isopod lovers might know and despise. <laughs> it's, I think this is manageable. But these are my R13 duckies. That's the hobby name for them. I'm not even sure if they're a Mirulanella species or if they are in fact Cubaris. You can see one of them here. Very interesting, it's like a reverse. But this is a Nigris cristatus. And those are definitely not albino Mirulanellas. At least I don't think. <laughs> I'm almost positive that they those are um, a few of the species, uh, Armadillidium species albino japans it somehow got in there. I have no idea how. And then over here we have a few of the uh, Armadillidium maculatum. So I don't know how in the blazes these animals got into this culture. I didn't transfer soil. I did stack some cultures so they must have somehow climbed over and fell through the mesh when they were really tiny. You gotta watch for that kind of thing because if that were the wrong type of species it'd be like just doomsday um, powder blues would take over but here are the Mirulanella. I think they're Mirul Mirulanellas. They might be uh, Cubaris but they're basically more or less they're an unidentified species of isopod uh, from Malaysia if I'm not mistaken. R13 is the road or highway that they the collectors stopped on when they found them and collected them. But yeah, I'm very happy to see that they are breeding. There are a few Menkai here. I think there's a few under the leaves there. And usually, I find a few under this as well. 
Yes, yeah, so again, some pesky Nigris. Honestly, that looks like uh, Cookie Monster Negro, so I don't know how that got in there. And then there's another one of the Mirulanella juveniles. I, I'm thinking maybe as they age, the f head part will darken. I don't know. But yeah, there's a bunch of them. Here's another. They're around. They're around in the enclosure. Like if I start moving moss, usually I find a few hiding in it. I don't know, I won't muck around in here too much, actually. That is a... Those are Menkai of this species. You can just tell by the shape of their bodies. See? That's the Mirulanella or the R13. But yeah, there you go guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing those. Probably one of the rarest species of isopods I have in my collection. Okay, so now we're getting into the Porcilio genus. Starting with my Porcilio wernerii, as I said, not an alphabetical order. It's just the genus starts with a P, so that's how we're doing it. These guys are doing incredible. Really taking off, producing lots of young. Um, stunning, stunning saucer-shaped isopods. One of my favorites in the collection. They get to be an impressive size. Beautiful coloration and skirting on these animals. Just an all-round crazy cool isopod. That really isn't that uh, common yet in the hobby, I find. Lots of people don't have them, but as you can see, they're just really thriving for me. So I'm happy that they're doing so well. Uh, yeah, just I have a lot of them. So if you're interested, again, Canadians... Hit me up. Always down for trades too if it's something I don't have that I'd like to get. Yeah, so beautiful. They seem to really love hanging out on the wood. So lots of bark in here for them. Again, some decaying wood. Like you can feel like this is just crumbles, you know, there's no isopod on it. So I'm just gonna show you, it just breaks. It's very soft and spongy and they Hang out on it at night and break it down slowly over time. Here's a little, another little guy or girl <laughs> um, over by the moss clump. But yeah, by, over on this side, things are definitely a lot drier. And then as you move and venture to the moist side, there's a, always a consistently wettish, moist clump of sphagnum. And maybe surrounding area here is wet. But overall, there's lots of cross ventilation. Big hole there in the lid with mesh. And it just does it for them. They really like dried fish, as well as uh, some different, uh, you know, fish foods and uh, a little bit of vegetation as well. They seem to like zucchini. So there you go, Porcelia wernerii. I feel like every time I open a container, I want to say these are my favorite isopods, but I guess they're all just really up there. These are one of my favorite isopods, though. These are the Porcelio ornatus high yellows. Uh, they have a lot of phenotypic expression for a high yellow trait. Now, the interesting thing about these animals is that I have quite a few that are dark like this, and then a few that have started developing with more of like a, a brown chocolatey coloration. So you can see the difference between this animal's base color and say that one. Uh, it's quite dark, and then that one's kind of like a brown. So I, I've actually seen a few people starting to isolate that trait. Ooh, some mold. That's going to have to come out. Isolating that trait and they're marketing it as a chocolate yellow or notis. So I think I'm gonna end up doing the same. Why not? You can see all the animals here doing quite fine um, Really thriving Doing amazing Really big animal there Quite large I find that as they age the the vibrancy of the color the yellow really comes in and pops so but yeah, it's just a very, very beautiful species of isopod. So, gotta love the Porcilio Ornatus High Yellows. A must-have in the collection. Okay, so this is a unknown form of Peascaber. These guys are just throwing all different types of morphs. There are some that are solid white, like you can see there. Some oranges. There are some that are brown or black Dalmatians. 
more orange Dalmatians. Somewhere in there I've even seen like a half and half animal that seemed to be like half black and half white, which is pretty interesting. Um, there's some greys as you can see. Just really interesting. So medley of things. Ah uh, yeah, I'm just kind of letting the animals do what they want and it's just kind of cool to see what uh, what they produce. So giving them lots of room, huge piece of cork to hide on, lots of nooks and crannies in there. Noticed a bunch of them hide in here. So they can do their thing and uh, hopefully they'll create some very interesting isopods in the future. Okay friends, here we have the Porcilio Flavo Marginatus. See a tiny little guy sitting there on the wood. I'm gonna gently lift this up. Oh, here's an adult animal. Very nice. Lots of juveniles. A few other juveniles hanging out here with an adult animal. They are a very cool, active, and quite beautiful isopod. That those beautiful white markings that almost give them like a shine. Looks like there's like a bright light glistening off of them but uh that's actually just yeah the the marking of their back so very very nice porcilio flavo marginatus all right so these always spark a lot of interest here are four forms of the porcilio lavis first starting with the porcilio lavis wild type so these are just the gray lavis but when I say just, I shouldn't be because they're not necessarily that common in the hobby. I don't necessarily see too many people keeping the gray form of Porcilio Lavis. They're they're nice looking isopod. Can't go wrong. Very, very cool. So yeah, those are the wild type, if you will. So next we have one of the hobby favorites, which is the Porcilio Lavis Dairy Cow form. You can obviously see where the animal gets its name from by the Calco Dairy Cow like markings base white color, lots of black marking. So these animals look really, really cool. Highly prolific, very hardy. And what's interesting about them is what you'll see in the next form. You can sort of isolate the animals that have very limited spotting uh, or close to none. And they can be placed in their own culture and you end up with the uh, whites, white labus. So they're solid white. So I'll show you guys those in a second here. But yeah, look at these beautiful dairy cows. They're really awesome. Easy, great starter isopods. If you're looking to start in the hobby, dairy cows are uh, affordable and great option. So here are the Porcilio Lavis whites. You can see the isolated traits where you have pretty well no spots on the animals. They're just gorgeous, large white isopods. Very active. All the traits that make the P. Lavis so exciting are in these animals. You just get a very white animal. So it's pretty cool as well. Gorgeous. Love these guys. And then finally for the P. Lavis forms we have the Porcilio Lavis Orange. Which are really neat because they get quite large. They're up there like the P. Magnificus if you're familiar with those. We'll see them a little later. But you know, the ease of care of the P. Lavis. So a really, really rewarding phenotype of the Lavis. Really nice isopods, look at them. Awesome. All right guys, so this is the Porcilio Expansus White. They are a very, very nice looking isopod. There's a few younger animals here. Uh, most of the ones I brought back from living in BC are not adults, so it'll take some while for them to grow, but they are doing really great. Just an incredibly well contrasted animal. They just look fantastic. Here you go, there's a juvenile or almost adult sized male. Stunning animals. Gotta love the P. Expansis. They are a really nice isopod that gets to be pretty large size, so Really, really, really cool. There's lots of them in this enclosure. Lots of bark. Things are kept pretty dry. Um, it's a deeper substrate, so it's a bit more moist down below, but they don't really burrow. Uh, but they do have their moist corner of moss, as always. They can retreat too if they need more humidity. And this species absolutely loves dried fish. They go crazy for it. It seems to be the one thing I find they eat the most of, so. Awesome, Porcilio expansus. 
Okay, next we have the Porcilio Hassi Light Form. These guys seem to be doing pretty good as well. Um, really, really elegant isopod. Some really large yellow spots on them. Great patterning, great structure. And they get to be a decent size, as you can see. It's a nice sized male, some pretty long Europods, which are the longer stick-like um, appendages on the end of the animal. Males have these, you can see it on a lot of the Porcilio species with the large Europods. But yeah, there's a nice female there and a male. Really, really stunning isopods, gotta love them. Alright guys, so next we have my Porcilio Spatulatus, which unfortunately haven't been doing so well before this move. Um, I'm happy to say that the ones I have left are doing well, and hopefully they're going to breed. But uh, yeah, so those are just dwarf whites, ignore them. You can see those. But here we have the Porcilio Spatulatus, and it's a real shame because they are a just stunning isopod. Very granulated body, um, disc-like shape. A nice grayish purple coloration. They're gorgeous animals. So I think I have like between 8 and 12 of them left, I'm afraid. Oh, another example of me having just a random other isopod living in there. Just wanted to see. He's been with them for a while. But yeah, there's, there's, there's a few of them left. And I'm really crossing my fingers that they're going to reproduce. I certainly hope so, at least. Here we have another beautiful color of a great beginner species of isopod. This is the Porcilio scaber, and these are the orange scabers. And a uh, maculatum that somehow got in there. Ay caramba. But yeah, look at these cool isopods. Very hardy, very prolific, great beginner species of isopod. They're just really doing fantastic in this enclosure. Look at all of them. Wow. Look at those isopods. Beautiful. So here guys we have another one of the uh, species recognized as a Spanish giant. These are the Porcilio Hoffman Seggies. Really cool isopods. They can be a little tricky to keep for some because people really underestimate how much ventilation they truly need. These animals are doing quite well. Um, lots and lots of them. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look at that. Again another True example, the colors and everything. Uh, these isopods really get large. I've noticed that there seem to be some that are a darker color and then some that are almost a bit of a tan color. So it's nice to see another species that's sort of throwing some different phenotypes out there. But yeah, they clearly are doing well. Nice young male there, some nicely developing Europods. They'll get twice as long by the time he's full grown. I mean, these are already breeding sized males. I'm sure they're capable of breeding. There's a nice female. But yeah, with all of this bark, they're able to develop some good amount of territory, if you will, which is seems to be kind of important for this species. They really do like to kind of mark their territory and you'll see males like frequenting different pieces of wood and stuff. It's, it's fascinating. So. The more you can give them, as far as like a dynamic habitat with lots of space and bark, I think I find the better this species does. So, awesome. Good sized isopods. Very, very cool. So another one of the species I had that really took a terrible turn for the worse as far as like crashing are my Porcilio Magnificus. So unfortunately I have about six of these left, I've counted. And I'm just babying them like crazy so that I can um, get them to reproduce and start a proper colony. So you can see there's three there, two there, and that one there is the sixth animal. So there's two large females that had a few mankai, and uh, those are some of the remaining mankai. Unfortunately, this culture got dry on its way over from BC, so I may or may not get more to add to it. Probably just going to see what... I can do with what I have. Hopefully a few of those young animals end up being male. So as you saw with that dairy cow before, the animals can live a long time. So who's to say these females won't be able to breed? But I mean, genetic diversity is a bit of a worry for me. I mean, I'm sure they'll be fine for a long time, but it's always good to add more. So yeah, these are really beautiful large orange isopods. So hopefully they do 
while I really like them a lot, I don't want them to pass away or anything. So they're getting babied. Awesome. So here we have my culture of Porcilio scaber calicos. This is an interesting sex dependent gene. So you can see that the male calicos actually are just gray colored. It's the females that have all the coloration. A few people have supposedly produced males that are calico. So definitely if that ever happens, isolate those males with a few nice colored females and try and have, um, you know, non-sex dependent uh, or non-sex differentials in the coloration because it would be really cool to have male and females that are calico, not just the females, which kind of seems to be the downside to this morph is that the males are just gray, whereas all the females are colorful. So, I mean, sure, that's for variety, but... Let's be real, we just want more of those incredible colored animals. That one's actually kind of interesting, it has a skirt. Very neat. But yeah, these uh, calicos are quite beautiful, as you can see. More males there, a few more females. Very nice. Okay friends, so these are my Porcillianoides prenosis. Uh, they're commonly known as the powder blues. Here you can see a few going into shed, but this is just like a medley or party mix of different colored ones. It's kind of fun. Now these were originally the Porcillianoides prunosis ombre that was being marketed in a lot of uh, forums or groups for a while. And I acquired some, but I noticed that this was not in fact a proven gene. As unfortunately, gradually, this is what I ended up with as opposed to animals that were several different colors. It was super cool, but unfortunately it was not genetically um, uh, provable to be a dominant trait that passes on. So I'm keeping them the way they are. We'll see what happens over time, but I, I'm not confident that suddenly they're going to start producing ombres again. But nonetheless, it's kind of like a big bag of jelly beans, but they're isopods. So it is still really cool to have this mix, and I do enjoy keeping them very much. Okay friends, and last but not least, the uh, final species I'm going to show you in my isopod collection tour are my Tuberillo Borneo, blah, 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 Borneo, Borneo, Bornealis, or, um, they're very tiny species of isopod, like I can't stress enough, everybody wants these, but they, I think a lot of people underestimate how small they are. Um, very interesting they are spiky so here's actually a little group of them hanging out just tilt that so you can see see what i mean by tiny there's one another one curled up behind them and there's one under the wood there just sitting there and you think they're dead but they're not um they're just yeah they're just hiding or not moving. It's it's rare to find them moving around, I find. Um, I, I rarely find them moving or doing anything. If we move a bit this way, there's one curled up there. I think there's a second one. But yeah, anyways, I don't want to create utter chaos in this little cup. We'll let those guys do their thing. And again, there's a few of them elsewhere, so... You can kind of just enjoy themselves and thrive. So, beautiful. Tuberillos. Well, there we go, guys. That was the last species I had to show you all. All right, guys, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed seeing my isopod collection tour. It's really nice to have things all settled and set up again so the animals are able to thrive and reproduce and hopefully get going. For those of you that are based in Canada, I just want to let you know that I actually do sell my animals. Go ahead and check my Instagram page, drop me a DM, and I'd be happy to send you my availability list. I ship Canada-wide, and I'm always happy to spread the love for the isopod hobby there. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the content and ding the notification bell so you know when my next video comes out. Thumbs up the isopods, and as always, I look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon. Take care, everybody. See you later on this week.